Hello, everybody. Welcome to our end of month. Well, actually, it's the beginning of the month uh, grantee meeting. Uh, this topic, as you all know, we're going to be focusing today on a project that's really a federal project um, that two of my colleagues are going to talk to you about in a few moments. Um, and this collective impact project was one where we were looking across programs and services early childhood programs and services, looking for areas of alignment and coordination and areas where we're not doing so well, um, and created a report of recommendations on things that we could be doing better. Um, when we presented this at one of the sessions at the annual convening, uh, a number of the participants who attended the session said, uh, first of all, they thought it was really interesting and that it would be valuable to other states to hear about it. Um, but also that they thought that many of the recommendations were relevant at the state level as well. And so we're hoping we're going to use today to have a conversation with you, to hear from you, to let you hear from each other. Um, as, as we always do at these all grantee meetings, we'll have a presentation for the first 25 or 30 minutes. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to go into breakout rooms and, um, and to be able to uh, talk with one another and answer some questions. You, if you saw today's reminder email, we already gave you in advance the questions that we want you to be thinking about when you go into the breakout group. Um, we're going to put them in the chat as well so that you have them uh, in advance of those breakouts. Um, and this way you could be thinking about that as you um, as you are listening to this morning's this afternoon's presentation. Um, the idea here really is we're looking for feedback from you based on what you see, what advice would you give us, what is missing, what, sound, what is most important for us to focus on, and at the same time, we're interested in hearing from you um, the value that you think this might have um, uh, uh, for you within your states. So uh, without any more uh, information than that, I'm going to pass the conversation over to Dina Lisa in, our, in HRSA, and she and one of our colleagues, Elena Schreier from our Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation Office, a ASPE, will also be presenting on this information. So Dina? Great, well, thanks so much. It is such a pleasure to be here. And Elena, you could move on to the next slide. Um, today, we're going to give you a brief overview of the Early Childhood Systems Federal Collective Impact Project, go over some of the tools and deliverables that resulted from that project, including a call to action, voices from the field, a catalog, crosswalk, and a synthesis of recommendations. And then as Richard said, we're going to go into breakout groups, have that discussion, and then come together to speak. And I just really want to say again what an honor it is to be here today and really to thank you um, deeply because not only for the work that you do every day, um, but voices from the state, local, and family leaders inform this work deeply, including those from PBG. Um, but you're also helping us realize our commitment to action and operationalizing the recommendations that came out of this project, which you'll hear a little bit more about. Because one of the recommendations was to establish meaningful and ongoing feedback loops that will allow us to really continue to learn from your bright spots and successes, as well as listen deeply and be responsive to the barriers that you face towards systems development, recognizing again that this project supported a deep dive into that, but there is an evolving landscape and there's always new opportunities and challenges to, um, to be realized. Next slide. So the Early Childhood Systems Collective Impact Project aims to re-envision a truly coordinated approach to program implementation across the early childhood system designed to advance equitable early childhood and family well-being outcomes. This project has taken a comprehensive and multi-generational vision of the early childhood system. And as you can see in the figure, recognizing that families don't live their lives in our program silos. This comprehensive system includes programs that serve expectant parents, 
children ages zero to eight and their families and that share a goal or touch upon an opportunity to really help promote thriving children and families. And we have heard and understand that the lack of alignment and coordination of requirements at the federal level is a significant and long-standing barrier to states' abilities to really do effective systems building work in a robust and sustainable way. Um, and we know that that gets in the way of maximizing opportunities for children and families. In fact, this is, as you know, not new. And I always like to elevate in 1989 in an Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, it was stated over the years, Congress has created a number of successful cost-effective programs targeted to pregnant women and children ages zero through six, such as the Maternal Child Health Black Grant, Medicaid, community health center programs, Head Start, WIC, and other programs. And despite their common causes, these programs are supported through several different authorities and more often than not have very different requirements. As a result, individuals who are entitled to review services under more than one of these programs are frequently unaware of their eligibility or are frustrated by the bureaucratic red tape in their attempts to obtain care. At that time, there was an ask of the Secretary of Health and Human Services in, to really develop a model application to really streamline enrollment and eligibility that you can find in an old federal, federal register. Um, but again, we know that this was a persistent um, challenge. And so what did we do? We funded a team at Mathematica and the Center for the social study of social policy to engage in a deep analysis and conversations with the field to identify and facilitate opportunities and recommendations for alignment, coordination, and equity at the federal level across federal early childhood programs. And what we centered the work on five elements of interest for looking at alignment and coordination that are key levers for change, as you can see. And these strategic levers were identified by leaders across early childhood programs whose commitment to sustainable shared impact across our program supported this work. And you can see that includes eligibility criteria, needs assessment, outcomes and performance measures, well-being metrics, and equity. Trying to think about if we aligned across some of those pieces, we can definitely create a far more seamless system. Um, and so I believe, is, are the survey, are the poll questions up as yet? Um, so we just wanted to take a pause and give you the opportunity to answer two poll questions. And you can see that they're framed. We recognize that there's a lot of coordination that happens, has to happen within an early, the early childhood education system in and of itself. That's a broad um, system. And the questions are phrased in a way that, that reflects that distinction. And you can move on to the next slide. And the project included three main sets of activities, a key document review and analysis, partner engagement activities and recommendations. And we will be sharing just a few of the products that emerge from these tasks. But we, there is a lot of rich information that you will hear more about. So we really encourage you to take a look at our project website to see the full cadre of resources that may be useful for you at your state work as well. You can Dina, do you want us to end the poll? Yeah, that sounds great. And Can I see this? Okay, great. So as is, you know, we know that your focus, it's good to see you moving forward with that ECE coordination. And then interesting to see the variety of partnerships across other sectors that, you know, really reflect to some extent the range of programs and sectors that are part of this project and recognizing, you know, that. 7% that housing, those um, key social drivers, sometimes not necessarily core to 
part partnerships, that health partnership is a piece of the puzzle, but you know, at 41%. So thanks so much for um for following us. And we'll, we'll have an opportunity to dig deeper into those opportunities and challenges in the um, in the discussion. So next slide. And we just provided a list of the specific programs that we did include in this very, you know, deep analysis. And as diverse and robust as it is, um, we did not include all of the programs that we would ideally like to include because we had to scope it out. For example, housing is not included in that, and it's clearly a key resource and opportunity to support children and families with. And so this was both very aspirational and broad, and we understand that there is, you know, even more, even more um, opportunities to think across a wider range of programs. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Elena from ASPE and have just so enjoyed our partnership and um, look forward to the next part of the conversation. Thank you, Dina. Um, so after that great introduction, what I'm going to do right now is walk through some of the tools and resources that we developed through the Collective Impact Project. Um, I'll start with, as Dina mentioned, we really grounded this work in wanting to hear from the field. As Dina said at the beginning, we know that there are barriers to alignment and coordination that originate at the federal level um, that kind of get in the way of the work that you all do in your states. And we really wanted to hear from you all in states, from um, program leaders, from parent leaders about what those barriers are and what would be needed to improve kind of the ability, uh, our systems building ability and um, kind of really to, to help our services work better for the um, ch young children and families who we support. So we um, engaged in a number of different activities to kind of hear from folks uh, in the field and on the ground, including a series of key informant interviews um, with, again, parent leaders, state officials, uh, tribal officials, and federal program and policy staff to really um, explore the needs and the challenges and the opportunities um, related to those five program elements that Dina mentioned. Um, uh, eligibility, needs assessments, outcomes and performance measures, well-being metrics, and equity um, to really under better understand how we can support a truly coordinated system. Um, I'll just share kind of a, a quick theme. Um, you can see a couple of uh, quote key quotes on the slide, but you know, really thinking that um, you know equity is so important um, in, in to kind of equity in service delivery, equity across the workforce is really critical to achieving equitable outcomes for children and families in a coordinated system. Um, we heard from uh, our key informants that um, in the process of building a comprehensive early childhood system, equity has to be a core goal, but that existing rules can really perpetuate and deepen inequities. Uh, but that there are lots of opportunities and examples of progress, including family voice councils or efforts to engage parents. Um, in planning and decision making, something I know PDG um, has really emphasized, um, and uh, you know, things like paid staff who are rooted in the communities they serve can really help to promote equity. What I'd like to do now is share briefly um, a video that our team compiled uh, with some of these voices from the field. So it's about four minutes long, um, and so I will play that now. Our nation's early childhood system aspires to be comprehensive, holistic, and equitable for all. It offers services for expecting parents, young children, and their families. It supports their health, mental health, early care and learning, and economic well-being. Programs operate with a shared goal that children and families across our nation can grow and thrive. But much work still needs to be done to realize this aspiration. The Early Childhood Systems Collective Impact Project aims to re-envision a coordinated approach to program implementation designed to advance equitable early childhood and family well-being outcomes. This project developed a series of recommendations to inform federal action across multiple agencies. Our next step is to transform those recommendations into actions. We need to listen to the perspectives of those who have experienced the opportunities that services make possible. We need to hear about the barriers that block access and participation, 
We need to listen to those who've been leading the charge at state and local levels to realize systemic change. Now, let's listen to some of those voices. Fundamentally, people with children need generally the same things. They need food, clothing, shelter, medical care, housing. They need all the basics and they need the tools to thrive. And there are so many programs available that can help families thrive. We need to understand what is working and what is not working in different places. And the federal government is really the place, I think, where all of that can be pulled together. It is a central organizing um, principle in our country that our federal government helps us understand what we need as a nation. And this is a national need. This is a national um, problem that we need to solve together. So for me, a national coordinated system would have some kind of infrastructure where there are shared goals and identifying the levers that can be pulled and can be supported for states and local areas to really optimize their ability to create real integrated systems and supports to support the physical, developmental, social, and relational health of children. And so for me, that falls into a number of categories, but it should be intentional. The, the federal agencies need to work intentionally with a shared vision, recognizing the already existing uh, assets and supports that we have. Whatever door kids are walking in through, whatever funding stream is attached to uh, the space that, that they are going to be in, whatever part of the system they come in through, that they get a consistently high quality experience, that it is easy for families to enroll, that they don't have to do it multiple times in multiple different ways and go through lots of different hoops. And that, that once that kids are in the system, right, they, they can expect a level of consistency and quality in, in what they are getting with individualization where it needs to happen. Um, and that, that I think to me, the most important part of a coordinated system is what we're coordinating to, right? Not just that we're aligned, but that we're aligned to something good. Um, and so ensuring that it is coordinated, right? Um, and, and aligned to the highest quality standards that we have. One of the things that I will say is the time and the effort it takes to properly connect um, and create trust amongst uh, community and families is a really daunting task. Um, and it takes a mind shift of understanding that you are now going to share power and you won't be able just to dictate what's going to happen. So the time it, to create the foundation and equity in practice, though it may look like nothing is happening, uh, once you get your feet on the ground of how you're really going to move forward after hearing and listening and thinking through all the different ways, the outcomes are so much more meaningful and they're above and beyond what you think is going to happen. All right. Um, so uh, that video is available uh, on our website uh, for folks to take another look at, but really, um, you know, thought it kind of exemplified what we heard uh, across all of our um, uh, partner engagement activities, kind of the reason why we, we are undertaking this effort. So what I'm going to do now um, is, is talk through some of the other tools uh, that we have uh, available on our website that may be um, of interest and of benefit uh, to the work that you're all doing in your communities and to talk through how these tools can be used together to answer key questions of interest as you engage in systems building and alignment and coordination work. So one of the activities that uh, we did with our contractor was to pull together a catalog of uh, program statute, regulation, and guidance uh, across the 36 federal programs uh, that were mentioned earlier on the slide, um, in part to really identify where are where are there, where is their alignment, where is their misalignment, and where does that alignment or misalignment exist? Is that because it's written in statute and that's the lever we would need to go to? Is it in regulation? Um, is that where we would need to make a change? Or is it in guidance where we might have some more flexibility in order to reduce any misalignment? So um, again, first the catalog compiles information from statute regulation and guidance across the 36 federal programs and the five elements uh, that we talked about earlier. It's formatted as an Excel tab or as an Excel document. We then create a crosswalk that aggregates the detailed information in the catalog to highlight program dimensions both within and across programs. 
Um, and then we have a synthesis document that really pulls out some of the key findings about how whether and how programs align in their requirements. There are also two supporting documents, including a methods memo that um, uh, as a really handy tip includes all source material, so all statute and regulation citations. So um, I know uh, I have spent less time Googling uh, because uh, there's this handy guide. And then a how to use document that can describe that describes how folks can use and navigate the catalog crosswalk and synthesis and include some sample questions that could be answered. So what I'm going to do now is walk through an example so you can kind of see how we envision these documents working together. Um, so I'll start with, uh, we're going to focus on an example related to eligibility. So starting in the catalog, one approach is that users could first review the catalog to um, gain a clear understanding of the federal program requirements. So here in the catalog, you can see catalog entries uh, reporting program eligibility requirements for three programs. So you have SNAP, Head Start, and TANF along the far left column. And here you can see that we are reviewing entry or information from program statute. You can see statute along the bottom tab. There are also tabs for regulation and guidance. All eligibility entries report both state level and program level eligibility requirements. Um, uh, and some uh, also include individual eligibility requirements for program participation. So for SNAP, you have state level eligibility, for Head Start state and program level eligibility, and for TANF, um, uh, state program and individual level eligibility. So now how we have aggregated that is we have taken the information related to eligibility in the crosswalk or in the catalog, and we have translated that into some key dimensions in the crosswalk. So again, here you can see that we're looking at the same three programs, SNAP, Head Start, and TANF. And at the bottom, we're looking at eligibility. So in the catalog, as you just saw, all eligibility information is reported within one column of the spreadsheet. And eligibility in the crosswalk is uh, translated into multiple dimensions. So it's dimensions like, does the state have discretion on how to define a means-tested requirement? What are the means-tested thresholds? Um, is there any cross-program eligibility? Or um, if eligibility in one program confers eligibility for another program. So for example, if we look at TANF down here, we can see from information in this column that eligibility in TANF confers eligibility to five other programs. So that's how we have translated the statutory reg and, re and regulatory language in the catalog into key dimensions of interest in the crosswalk. And then in contrast, in contrast to the catalog and crosswalk, the synthesis is formatted as a Word document with bulleted themes, including counts. Um, so in the synthesis really communicates findings related to the dimensions across the 36 programs. Um, so, you know, this was just one example of how these materials can be used. Um, users could also choose to start with the synthesis to think about counts of how prevalent requirements are, then use the crosswalk to identify programs with or without certain cross or certain requirements, and then move to the catalog. So there's not a right or a wrong way to use these resources, but we hope they are um, valuable uh, as, the, as you are kind of thinking about where there may be flexibilities to align and coordinate um, and uh, I, as you identify areas of misalignment. So now I'm going to go into talking about kind of the meat of this project and what we, you know, what we kind of the goals were, which was developing recommendations for federal action to improve alignment and coordination. So here we have a comprehensive, we, we've developed a comprehensive set of 10 recommendations that are really designed to guide federal actions across multiple agencies. These recommendations were informed by all of our project activities, including the voices from the field and um, you know, the information that we had in the catalog and crosswalk. Each recommendation, each of the 10 recommendations includes specific sub-recommendations or actions. So very specific concrete activities or actions that the federal government could undertake in order to move towards alignment and coordination across programs. 
In addition to the specific actions, we've also identified the policy levers that we think um, would be necessary in order to undertake those actions. So there are four policy levers uh, that are so could be indicated for each action. So we have executive or administrative action. So those are things that could be accomplished through regulation or guidance or research funding announcements, um, kind of or any other administrative action available within federal agencies. We have actions that would require statutory change. So you know, these are things where the requirements are written in statute um, and we would need legislative change to implement or accomplish the action. We have actions that require financial resources. I think certainly all of the actions on this list would benefit from uh, additional investment, but some actions are simply not possible without investing newer additional resources. And then we have actions that um, could be implemented through training or technical assistance. So really trying to create a roadmap um, for these recommendations. And I should say that these are some of these recommendations are things that could be accomplished in the kind of more immediately, whereas some of these actions are really long term and would take a lot of time and effort and resources in order to accomplish. So. Um, you know, the, the whole set of recommendations are things that kind of could individually or in partnership um, uh, kind of help us make progress towards achieving uh, the vision of a aligned and coordinated comprehensive early childhood system. So what I'll do is walk through the 10 high level recommendations, um, and then we have a couple um, of last polling questions before we uh, enter into breakout groups to delve deeper uh, into some of these recommendations and actions. So the first set of recommendations are really around building a foundation for interagency coordination at the federal level. So it's things like establishing a comprehensive supportive infrastructure for systems building, um, developing a shared vision and guiding framework for child and family well-being and equity across our early childhood programs, and establishing and using common definitions uh, across programs. The second set of recommendations are around aligning and coordinating specific elements. So it's things like improving access to services through streamlined eligibility requirements or reciprocal eligibility or coordinated program entry. Uh, needs assessments, so being sure to coordinate, streamline, and centering family strengths and equity in needs assessments across programs. And then defining and tracking common outcomes focused on equity, child and family well-being, coordination, and systems change. The uh, third set of recommendations are around involving and empowering people to build and sustain a well-functioning system, so elevating family perspective and voice in decision-making, and building a diverse, capable, respected, and well-compensated early childhood service delivery workforce. And then the final uh, two recommendations are related to um, federal data and coordinated research, uh, so creating effective mechanisms for data sharing and integrated federal data systems, and developing a federal research agenda that guides evaluation, um, scale up, and implementation. And within each recommendation, so the sub actions are divided into two sections. Uh, one section of the recommendations is really focused on what federal agencies could do in partnership together, so how the federal government can work uh, better together uh, in coordination. And then a set of recommendations related to how individual programs can then help translate and feed those changes in that coordination down to grant recipients. So you'll see two separate um, kind of sections of recommendations. Um, but what I'd like to do now is talk to uh, is, is launch the two polling questions um, to give you an opportunity to share. Um, what of the so kind of which of these actions would be most meaningful if federal leaders could make progress in aligning and coordinating across programs so we have a selection of these um so you can select kind of your top one or two that would be most meaningful um for the federal government to to work towards alignment and coordinating on and then what areas of technical assistance would be most valuable to support your state efforts um so We'll give folks a minute or two to, to answer these polling questions before moving into the breakout groups. I'm going to end the poll. Yep. Sounds great. Okay, I'll share the results briefly. Looks like a wide range of um, priority areas. Many would be, looks like, meaningful to 
to folks. I see data systems, uh, eligibility and access, shared vision and definitions, workforce, um, and outcomes and performance measures all got many votes. Um, I see certainly financing would be very important uh, to you all. Um, data sharing across systems as uh, kind of areas of TA.